Hey guys, it's casualnerdhammer.net and it has been exactly six months, almost to the day, since my last video and I want to thank you all who stayed subscribed and have been looking for content and for those who didn't, well I can't blame you man, it's been a long time. But here we go, I got a battle report and it's a ninth age battle report. Um, quick background if you don't know what ninth age is, it's a continuation of Warhammer Fantasy that has been created by a very large community. And they have, they have infrastructure, they have team members, army book creators, all types of things. And um, they changed all the, the intellectual property of G-Dub to uh, hopefully maybe go bigger with it. You know, maybe publish some books with their names and I don't know. But I tell you what, it's Warhammer and I love Warhammer. And that's probably why you're at this channel because you love Warhammer too. So uh, let's just get into Battle Report. Forget all that other stuff, all right? Here we go. <clears throat> so I'm running the Knights of Equitaine, which is Old Bretonia. On my left side, I have a unit of Yeoman. I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. I forget if I have that set up or not. Um, if you can, no big deal. I'll, I'll try to just not worry about it. Uh, unit of Peg Knights, they're skirmishing and have devastating charge. Um, the Peg Knights have a couple more options now. They can get a two up armor save, which is pretty nice. I never understood why the Peg Knights didn't have barding anyway. Um, down here where you see that cannon, that's actually a catapult. I'm just using that so I can determine between the trebuchet and the catapult um, for my own knowledge because Bretonia have four total war machines now, which is pretty fun. Um, in the center, these knights that are my red knights are actually from my Empire Army. Uh, they are my grail knights for this round. And in with the grail knights, I have two characters now. These are pretty pretty nice builds. I imagine some of it's going to go away maybe in an update, but um, for right now the Duke build looks like this. He has a 1-up rerollable armor save, which is awesome for Bretonia, of course. He has a Grail Vow, which gives him immune to psychology and a 5-plus ward save. Uh, magic and Divine Attacks. Magic Attacks are, you know, they can hit ethereal uh, creatures. Divine Attacks are, uh, let me see if I remember this correctly, oh, you re the opponent has to reroll failed ward saves. Um, so real powerful there. That's a that's an awesome little combo. <clears throat> uh, it has a flaming lance for fire, which I'm not really I'm not 100% sure I like that because there is a lot of you know there still is the two up against fire, and I think maybe just giving a regular lance would be a better option. But eh, who knows? Because the ball plus one to hit, so most things he's hitting on threes anyway or on twos anyway, which is awesome. MR one, so that's going to bring his ward save up to a four. In this unit, and he has Virtue Might, which plus one strength, plus one attack on the charge. And he basically, for every, he's like a old vampire blender lord. Every attack he does that wounds generates another attack. Um, his future attacks can't generate more attacks, but even still, you know, he has I think five, five, seven, five strength, seven attacks on the charge, and uh, and then he gets some more. So yeah, he is he is pretty nasty. Um, I put him in with the Grail Knights. The Grail Knights actually start up with a 5 aboard save and immune to psychology now. They have two attacks apiece. Um, the whole rank can, the whole lance pretty much can attack because um, Bretonia get supporting attacks, of course, just like any other army. But they also have um, the Lance Formation gives them attack and extra ranks, and that can stack. And so, and the Lance Formation gives them an extra attack and rank. So, this whole rank can attack. And Grail Knights have monstrous support on the knight, so they get two attacks each, and yeah, that's a nasty unit. Um, I put the Paladin in there. He has the Grail Val also, which is the same as the Duke. Uh, he has the Hardened Shield, so it's plus two to armor instead of one. It gives him a one-up. The Dust, Dust Stone, of course, gives him a one-up rollable. Pretty nice. And then the Virtue of Piety, which is a 75-point virtue, gives him and the whole unit plus one to the ward save. So now I'm looking at four-up ward save... Uh, Grail Knights and my hero and the Pally. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty pretty lethal combo. Um, here I have another unit of Grail Knights. Uh, I have um, a Grail Damsel in there. She gets a Wafer of Pestilence at the beginning of the comp or beginning of the game. She gets to roll D three plus one and she gets a Wafer. For every one of those Wafers, when she goes to dispel, she gets D three to. She can use a Wafer after she tries to attempt to dispel and then she gets to use a way for that as d3 more to the cast attempt not as good as a dispel scroll but i still like it i think that could really help you win over some magic phases defensively and i have her as a level four 
on white magic, was, which is basically what high magic was. Uh, the real reason why I took this lore is because there's a spell that gives plus one to ward saves. So then you see the Grail Knights with a three up ward save and just, that's a, it's a pretty, pretty nice combo. Um, I have some Bowmen on the hill. Uh, Volley Fire is different now. It, I forget how it goes. Like everybody can shoot if they don't move, I think, something like that. Um, yeah, I, I forget. But yeah, Volley Fire is different. You have to look it up to see how it is. Uh, Pezzyom in there again, and then I have a Knight's Errant Lance, which is a nice, Knight's Aspirant. Um, they're like cheaper Knights now, kind of like I would consider them like 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 Cav Knights or Medium Cav Knights. It's probably a better example. So, and I'm facing an old opponent, an old friend, <laughs> uh, Rob with the Skaven. Uh, I'm not sure the names of the Skaven units, but we're just going to kind of go what I remember them used to be, or what they used to be. <clears throat> Uh, right here on his top left, he has a BSB on a monstrous rat, I believe. And then he has his vermin lord in behind the hill, unit of uh, slaves. These are in the middle horde. I think they're like uh, storm vermin, basically. I think there's an engineer in there. Another unit of slaves. And then on the other side of the board, he has the plague pendulum with a unit of plague monks. Uh, Huey the A-bomb and then a unit of I think they're called Thunder Hulks now um, pretty shooty unit I think you can choose between 2d6 and 3d6 shots at like 24 inches um, they're good in combat they, they they can switch weapons anytime they want I think they that's called weapon mastery in the game now um, so yeah they, they're a pretty nasty unit they still only hit pretty much hit on fives at long range but and anytime they roll a double for their number of hits I think they take a uh, Take a misfire result, but or and you can do like two d six or three d six attacks if you feel like being risky. Um, so Bretonia actually didn't pray, but <laughs> I didn't get to go first, and I'm not sure how that works out in the rules now. But um, if you don't pray, you still get a six, six up ward save across the army. But if you do pray, you get five up against strength five. Um, I know he. I don't think he has a lot of strength five in here, but. I should have just went second anyway. I don't know. Uh, we have a secondary objective that is called, I forget, <laughs> but it's like at the end of the game, whoever has the most scoring units within six inches of the center spot of the table gains like 20% of the total victory points played. So a possible, we're playing a 2,400 point game here. So there's a possible 40, 480 victory points um, just for having the, the most scoring units in the center of the table. Really like the secondary objectives in, in Ninth Age. It really adds another dimension to the game. And um, kind of like what we did in GTs anyway, but it's just right there in black and white for you now, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, just another close-up of, of his army. So he gets first turn, he moves up like this. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of shooting on this side, so why not push up in my face? And on this side, yeah, he's pushing up as fast as he can. What I'm noticing with his... With his deployment here, he, he is kind of spread out. That building we're painting, the whole thing is impassable. We didn't actually really get too in-depth with the new rules for uh, for buildings and such for in Ninth Age yet. There are rules laid out, and you can read them on their website. Um, this little green area in the middle here, we're not counting that as a lake either. So, uh, Magic, uh, he gets Massive Flesh and Necrotic Blessing onto his uh, Pendulum unit. In his shooting phase, yeah, he <laughs> he shot some Aaron Knights. They panicked, ran off the table. They panicked the Yeoman, who almost ran off the table. Um, yeah, so first round of shooting was pretty good. My Knights Aaron was just kind of like an afterthought. They're not the seven seven man unit of them isn't that big, but um, I just I'm just trying to figure out what units I need to play here. All right, so turn one, uh, Bretonia. <clears throat> so I start moving up. Um, I'm giving him some room. I'm kind of facing my lances both ways. I'm not sure which which side of the table to threaten first. Um, I know my Grail Knight unit is absolutely a heavy hitter, and I think I could make short work of the Storm Vermin if I can get in there, but I need to buy some time with the Hell Pit and the uh, Plague Pendulum from getting over and busting up the party on the left side. So I'm kind of bringing my Chaff in reserve here. If you notice, I'm kind of pulling back. Um, I'm kind of repositioning the Peg Knights so that if I need to slow them up, slow up the the pl uh, Plague Monks, I you know I'll have them at my disposal. 
and trying to figure out what to do with the other chaff. And shooting. <laughs> I, I got pretty lucky with my first four trip shots, but um, this one landed on the BSB's head and killed him. I, I, I think he had a, even a three up regen on him and failed that. And uh, Trebs do D3 plus two wounds, and I rolled a six for that, so that was enough to kill him. I think he only has four wounds. So the Trebs are off to a very good start. They are on fire, um, on fire already. So that's looking good. Then, other than that, not much happened. I think I put a ward save up on my uh, Grail Knights to get them up to a three up. Turn two, he moves up like so. Um, he pushes the slave unit right up into my face. And I think he gets me asthma off on the Grail Knight, so I'm not making any real long charges with them. Um, he pushes Vermin Lord up here. I'm a little surprised. I'm not sure. I mean, they're going to be steadfast and, and have his leadership and, and strength and numbers. But I don't know. My two lances, my two lances, uh, they're, they're going to put out a lot of wounds. So I don't know. I, I'm tempted to go in. I'm not 100% sure which direction I want to go, but... With that BSB dying, uh, it's really pushing my hand to the left side of this table. Um, I think I can try to do some work over here and delay that right side for a little while with my chaff. Um, in his magic or shooting, one of them, uh, they do two wounds to the to the Knights of the Realm, which isn't too bad. And turn two, turn two Bretonia, or Knights of Equitane. <clears throat> So yeah, I just decided to go for it. Let's see, let's see what the new stuff can do. I'm trying to not, I'm, I'm trying not to take this game as competitively as I would have <laughs> in, uh, in the past year or so. Um, and I even, I, even when I knocked out the BSB, I told Rob, I'm like, man, put him back. Let's see what he can do. Um, but Rob wasn't having it, so I figured, let's see what Bretonia can do. So I'm sorry for the blurry picture. It's been a while, I guess, and some things never change, I suppose. So I decided to take both lances into the Skaven. I think I need to kill like, I don't know, 25 for them not to be steadfast. So yeah, I, I'm kind of taking a gamble there. I'm hoping that I can blow through them. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Over here, I repositioned my uh, Yeoman who actually rallied. That was awesome. Uh, on the far right of the table, I'm kind of just trying, kind of just trying to tempt the. <laughs> the A-bomb to come over that way and, and waste time, but I don't think he's going to fall for it. And, yeah, so after combat, I do uh, blow up the slaves. Actually, they don't even blow up anymore. Um, they break, and I run them down. I needed a 9 to get into his general, and I made it with both units. So that is fantastic. Um, the plague pendulum is still pretty far away. I think that's like a 10-inch charge for them. So hopefully I can work on his general real fast. Um, I tried to put these these yeomen up to uh, chap up this unit. I don't know if I made it or not, but um, yeah, we'll see how that all works out. So turn three Skaven. <laughs> I actually tweeted this picture, and I thought it was just a great example of how Ninth Age is Warhammer. I mean, these are the big battles. This is what you want to see, this mass fantasy style game. And... And have the craziness that that Warhammer always has had. So, okay, so he makes some charges. Slave unit, I was 100% sure he could make that wheel and go in, but he did it when I wasn't really paying attention. But uh, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He gets the slaves in there. Um, the Storm Vermin came in, uh, no problem. And over here, he needed a 10 to get in here, and I'm really surprised uh, Really surprised he made it in. If you notice, there's a few missing. I actually got Fiery Convocation. I don't know what it's called now off on them and it did some wounds. I, I, I casted the boosted version, got it off, and it's strength four, remain in play, hits every model with a flaming attack. Um, so that, that wore them down a little bit, which was really nice. I was hoping to just buy another turn or two, get the peg knights over to, to chat them up, um, but it didn't happen. He rolled a 10, so this here scares me. This is uh, this is gonna go go pretty pretty crazy. On the right side here, yeah, Huey comes up. He's going into my Bowman. I'll make short work of him. And uh, his Thunderhawks are uh, coming up. Fire Convent goes off on these guys, or Fiery Conviction. Conviction goes off on these guys and kills some more. And yeah, Huey easily kills the uh, Bowman. He decides to overrun with him to get him out of the Ark of the Peg Knights. 
and after combat. <clears throat> well, his first and foremost, his general's dead. So I get in a challenge with his, um, with his general, with my general. And I asked him before the game, I said, does he have any magic items, anything like that, blah, blah, blah. And he said no. Um, but he does have D3 wounds, which is my own fault. We were sharing lists. I could have easily looked at it. So as soon as he said that, I got a little nervous. Um, he ended up putting, I think, four wounds through onto my general. So I have one up, rerollable armor save. I think he was strength six. So I have a four up, four up, and then a three up ward save from the uh, from the uh, lore of of white magic, or yeah, from the spell from white magic. So I end up saving every single wound because the D three. I mean, I think the da the duke only has three wounds, so I I could have easily died, but I don't. I ward save in in grand fashion. And of course, the uh, the my general comes back and absolutely makes makes mincemeat of that big rat. Um, so I reform like this, and I'm going to kind of explain each of these reforms. Um, on this side, on the right side, I actually lost combat, and it was it was interesting because it was one of those situations where we kind of knew how to handle an eighth edition. You fight yourself out of combat. Um, I wouldn't get combat res for the BSB because he's not in the combat anymore. He's in a different combat from, from this unit. Um, and we kind of had questions about him going back and forth. I said, well, let me just look it up. And I went right to the rules, right to the page, and it was as clear as day. Like, this is how it goes. So um, basically, the wounds count to each side. It, it's it's written plain out. Rules count, uh, wounds count to each side. Um, I had a banner in this one unit, and... Uh, you know, I ended up actually losing because I didn't do a whole lot of wounds to the uh, to the plague monks. This unit ended up losing by three, so I was at leadership six, rerollable, and I was able to pass it, which was huge. Because if they get an overrun into the flank of um, into the flank of my Grail Knights, that would have been a problem. So I reform the Grail Knights wide like this because why not? Um, I mean, they have two attacks each, and then the horses will get trampled, so they get a stomp basically in close combat on the second round of combat. And Bretonian horses are strength four. So yeah, there was um it was a no-brainer to go wide like this. And you know, I think I'll make up for the lack of ranks with the sheer amount of wounds I'll be able to do. Um I think that was the right decision. But yeah, so that's exciting. I'm gonna hopefully, you know, it'll be a good battle there. I don't know how this one is gonna go on the right, but we'll we'll see how it goes. So turn three, um over here. Uh, I'm not sure what that's showing. Oh, I guess it's... Uh, that's right, it's my turn. So the Peg Knights go into the flank of the uh, Pendulum. Uh, I just bring these Yeomen back. That I have nothing to do with them. I'm just going to try to conserve their 65 points or 55 points, something ridiculous. At least small like that. And over here, um, yeah, I get the 3-up ward save again on the uh, Grail Knights. And I do a lot of damage. <clears throat> and... Um, I think he called it here, yeah. He called it here. I broke both of these. I broke this unit, and with the Peg Knights, we didn't even fight it because he figured that um, the game was pretty much in hand. Yeah, it was uh, kind of a short battle. I, w I was hoping to get a little bit more out of it and, and get a little bit more you know, experience with the Bretonian and what they can do, but it was, uh, it was fun, man. It's fun to see Warhammer again on the table and, and play. And I gotta, I gotta say kudos to the ninth team because the ninth age team because any rules dispute we had, we were able to look it up and immediately find an answer. I mean, compared to the big red book and the, the two hours it would took take to find something in that book, um, it was right there in plain English. And you know, I actually had it up on my laptop and was able to search the PDF document and find exactly where where it was. So. Um, so it's been really enjoyable. Um, I'm looking to get more games. I'm looking to see it, looking to run a tournament, possibly a local one one day, just to uh, to spread the word about the game. Because if you've been lost the past six months, like we've been, um, I think we found it. I think I think this is the Warhammer I know and love, and I want to keep playing and I want to support the people in process. And hey, if it doesn't last three years. I don't care, at least I'm playing Warhammer for the time that it does until I can't find any opponents or can't find any GTs or tournaments to play. Um, but that's it, and uh, I'm, I have a uh, Kings of War battle report coming up. I'm actually playing in a 2v2 
uh, tournament, a thousand points each. Well, it's actually two thousand per side. Um, I'm not really well versed in Kings of War, so the battle report might be a little wonky because I don't know the names of the units and whatnot. Um, I've kind of been guided by uh, by uh, beans on it. So that's going to be coming up real soon. I'm going to probably do that report tonight too uh, and just kind of stagger the releases a little bit. But I'm looking to add more content to the site. I'm also getting into Malifaux, so I don't know what the best way to do battle reports for that too is, but um, we are looking to start a podcast. We actually did another podcast episode, but apparently it got lost in the in the void of the internet. So I don't know if it's kind of dated now because it's been about three weeks and, and we've gotten games since then. So I'm hoping that we actually have podcast content. I'll let you guys know when that comes out. Um, always check out nerdhammer.net for the latest. Um, check me out on Twitter, Casual NH, and Nerdhammer.net for the rest of the crew. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.